Hello world. Yesterday, I had to fly to Nagoya, the city that I lived in for more than four years. The city whose airport I've used dozens of times over the past eight, nine-ish years. I did not know when I flew back to Nagoya yesterday that they had opened a second terminal seven days ago. For years and years and years, I've used this airport and it is such a quick walk from the plane to the train. Cause you know, Japan, if you go into the airport, you're probably getting on the train and going back into the city. That's how most people travel. Although apparently they have docks for like boat pickup and drop off too, which I've never seen. I kind of want to go see if I can find that one day and see what that's like. But uh, so yesterday, so, so normally you can, if you're not picking up checked luggage, you can go from your plane to the train within 10 minutes. It's like a really quick walk, but not if you're in the second terminal, which I did not know existed yesterday. Yesterday, I had to be in Nagoya at 12.30. Uh, it's usually about a 40 minute train ride from the station to the city center, Nagoya station. Uh, you can get faster trains. Some are like maybe 30 minutes. Um, if you get like a reserved really quick train, is it the normal one 40 minutes, 45, 50? It's kind of a long train back into the city. No, I think it's like 40 minutes from the train to Nagoya City. Um, so I planned what I always plan, which is time for the 40 minute train and then a little bit of time to get off the plane, maybe an extra 10 or 20 minutes just in case the plane is late and then I'll be able to make my appointment. That's usually how I fly domestic here. That's how I've always done it. And it's always worked because Nagoya has always had one terminal. But no, now they have a second terminal where they drop off budget airliner trash like me. And it is not a 10 minute walk to the trains. So if you are flying into Nagoya one day, you should be aware that they may drop you off in the second terminal, which is the most bizarre walk back to Terminal 1 that I have ever experienced in an airport. Now sometimes when you fly international or like a really cheap airline, they'll drop you off at like one of the really far away um, gates, you know? So you have to like walk all the way back through the normal gates or, you know, around them to get to, uh, to get to, either bag claim or immigration if you have to go there. Sometimes it can be quite a bit of a walk, but that's not what Terminal 2 budget airliner trash walk is like. First of all, they stopped the plane in the middle of the tarmac, which I was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, sometimes they do that if you're flying on a cheap plane and then they, you know, bring a bus over to the plane and then they bus you back to the terminal somewhere. So I was like, okay, I guess I have to wait for the bus. Uh, I wasn't counting on that, but I've got time for it. That's fine. No, they did not bring a bus. We had to walk from the plane back to the terminal. They had this like a uh, walkway, this, it folded out like an accordion. And they just like brought it from the terminal over to the plane. So, and it wasn't like the longest walk in the world. I mean, it's Japan, it's a normal walk for Japanese people. So we had to walk through the accordion little thing back to the terminal and I was like, okay, well that's fine. Now I'll just get into the terminal and then go through bag claim really quickly like I always do. No, we had to climb three flights of stairs where there was no elevator. So I was like, this is weird. Normally if they have stairs, they have an elevator built somewhere for people who have a bunch of carry-on luggage or like, you know, people who have need wheelchairs or are like old or have some sort of like invisible disability or something. No, there was no elevator. We just had, everyone had to climb three, three flights of stairs. I don't think climbing three flights of stairs is very much. It's very common here in Japan. If you live in an apartment, a lot of them, especially older ones, don't even have elevators for like, uh, maybe up to like five floors. And so, you get used, if you're living like that, you get used to walking up lots of flights of stairs. Honestly, if you're visiting a lot of places, most places, you're gonna walk a lot of stairs here in Japan. It's not that big of a walk for me. 
I wasn't bothered by it, but I did feel bad for people who had to carry all of their luggage up these three flights of stairs. But then I was like, well, that's okay. Now we'll just get back into the terminal and proceed like normal. No, that is not what happened. Then we had, we just like crossed through a little hallway and then we went back down three flights of stairs again. And I was like, this is bizarre. And then from the bottom of those three flights of stairs started the maze. <laughs> There were no windows. It was just a narrow, white, pure white hallway, very long. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, sometimes this happens when you get dropped off at an airport. You have to walk a weird route back to baggage claim in the terminal. Okay, sure, let's do it. And so I was speed walking. I'm a speed walker kind of person. I don't like, like walking slowly. Also, I always want to make sure that I'm making my trains on time or whatever. So I was speed walking through. I finally get to the end of this extremely long hallway and I turn the corner and it's another identical, white, narrow, extremely long hallway. And I'm like, again? Okay, well, sure. So I do it again, speed walking all the way down this hallway, even speed walk. There's none of those like fast moving, you know, escalator platforms. It's not an escalator, you know, the ones that are just like still that you can walk on that airports sometimes give you if you have to go a long distance. There's none of that. You just have to walk the whole way. And so I'm speed walking through this second long narrow white hallway. I finally get to the end and I turn the corner and it's another identical <laughs> long narrow white hallway and I'm like what is going on there's so many of these it's like exactly the same it's n there are no windows it's not like a normal walk back where you're you can see the planes outside and you're walking by clearly closed gates or past immigration processing centers that are closed or anything no it's just an enclosed white hallway with no offshoots there's nowhere you can go there's nothing there it's just a long white hallway and so I get to the end of this one and then I turn the corner and it's another long, identical, extremely long white hallway. And eventually we get to what I can only guess is the halfway point. I don't know if this was the halfway point. Maybe it was the three fourths point. I really don't know. I would maybe consider, I think, I, I think in my guess it would be the halfway point. And on the floor, finally, they had writing that said, by now, you've burned 27 calories. And I was like, I was so annoyed at these long white hallways because it was taking forever to get through them. And I was like, really? I don't care, <laughs> right? Okay, but 27 cal, do you have any idea how much walking you have to do to burn 27 calories? So you continue walking, and you continue, you turn the corner, and there's another long identical white hallway, and then you keep going, and find, you get to the end of that hallway, and you turn the corner, and there's another identical long white hallway. I have no idea how many long white hallways there were. It was like a maze. I thought I was gonna live there forever. I thought it would never end. That was, fuck you, are you meowing? What you doing? I thought that was just gonna be my life forever. That's just how it was. Um, just long white hallways for the rest of my life and I would never get back to the airport. Uh, I think, I believe it took me about 10 minutes of super power walking. I am a very fast walker normally and then if I'm power walking, I was basically zooming in between all of the people to get to the terminal as quickly as possible. Finally, we passed baggage claim. It's a weird baggage claim. I've never seen this before. Keep going through it. Finally, we get th past the security point and out into the terminal. This is not Nagoya Airport. Where am I? <laughs> What's going on? I had no idea they built a Terminal 2. So I like, looking around, I run over to an information desk. I'm like, where's where's the train in Japanese? Densho doko desu ka? And then she brings out a map and she traces a route on this map that's like a long U, like, a long roundabout way to get back. And I'm like, for a minute, I'm like, do I have to go back through those hallways again? Did I miss something somewhere? What's happened? No, I did not have to go through the hallway again. I just had to walk to terminal one because I was in terminal two. And I asked her how long, well, first she explains the route. I'm gonna have to walk over here, go out these doors, go up some stairs, and then there's gonna be a bunch of ramps, and then I have to turn right, and I have to, cross over the bridge, over 
the road and then I have to pass through a new building they built called Flight of Dreams and then I have to go through that and then I turn left and then there's a long walk back to Terminal 1 and then I have to turn left into Terminal 1 and then I will be there and I was like how long is this gonna take and she was like it'll be about seven to eight minutes and then before she even finishes that sentence because the end of the sentence in Japanese is just a grammar point you get most of the information at the beginning. I'm already, I'm sprinting <laughs> because my train leaves in 10 minutes and it's the last train I can take to make my meeting on time. And, um, and it's a reservation only train, which means I'm gonna have to wait in line to get special tickets to get a seat. I can't just like take my UC card, UC card? No, I can't just take my IC card and go through and get on the train. Technically, I think you can, they'll just have come, someone come around and like, make you pay for the train seat that you didn't pay for previously. I did that once on accident before and I cried because I was having a really stressful day. I wasn't even supposed to be on the train. I got lost in the city taking Meitetsu trains. I don't like Meitetsu trains. It was a bad time. I don't want to do that. Need to wait at the counter and get a ticket for the train like I'm supposed to. Um, by the way, this entire time I've had to pee really bad. I have a very small bladder. I have to pee a lot. I drink a lot of water. Uh, I take spironolactone, which also makes you pee more. I could not. I didn't have time to stop to pee. My train was leaving in 10 minutes. She said it's seven or eight minute walk. I have to wait in line to get tickets. So I'm running. I'm sprinting outside. I'm sprinting up the stairs. I'm out of shape. I haven't done that much exercising. I'm like, this is going to be bad. I really hope I don't overexert myself and throw up because, you know, in the military, sometimes when you're like running too hard, like during a PT test or practice PT test, there are a lot of people who drop out so they can throw up on the ground because you're pushing yourself too hard. When you do that, when you you're running sometimes you throw up it just happens I'm like please don't throw up please don't make my lungs hurt from like breathing in air so heavily please, please just please don't make this a bad thing I just really hope I can make it there in time hopefully I have enough energy to run the rest of the way so I sprint up these stairs I get to the ramps the ramps going up of course, they're long ass ramps. So I'm running past people. There's lots of people just casually walking. They're like coming home from vacation or something. They're all chatty with their families. They're all happy. And I'm just running past them, wheezing, go around the corner. It's the same ramp back up the exact same way. It's just like, they could have just given us more stairs, I guess, to go up and it would have been quicker. But instead we have these long ass ramps right after stairs. Why was it right after stairs? I don't know. So I'm running up, I get to the end of the ramp and you have to go around to the left, but another slight ramp and then there's another slight ramp and then you're crossing the bridge over the street and I'm going through this building called Flight of Dreams. I don't have time to look at it. I'm running past, running through the building, getting all the way over to the end where finally I can turn left and then this will take me back to Terminal 1. And finally, for the first time since I arrived, they have those like L those like automatic walkways. So I get on those, I'm power walking through these automatic walkways. In Japan, you're supposed to stand on one side, on escalators, walkways, whatever, you're supposed to stand on one side so people can like walk past you on the other side. It changes depending on which city you're in. People weren't doing that, they were just standing, blocking the entire walkway, sometimes they do. So I'm like speed walking up and I'm trying to like get through and like people are moving slowly because you know, they're normal people and they're not in a rush because maybe they knew they had terminal, they were getting dropped off at terminal two or maybe they weren't in a rush to meet, to, to get a train like I was. So uh, I'm weaving in and out all of them. It's a freaking long ass tunnel again. There are a lot of walkways going on and off all of these. I think there's like four of those escalator walkways. Finally get to the end. I see some automatic doors. I'm like, please, 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 please let this be the main lobby in terminal one on the left. I get in there. I go through the doors. It is the main lobby. I've never been through these doors over on this side because there's no reason to go to this side of the main lobby. It's the opposite direction of the airport. I had no idea what was originally on the other side of these doors. Maybe that's how you get to the dock with all those boats. I don't know. Um, so I'm running over to the train ticket counter. There's two people in line. I don't have time to like weave in and out of all those ropes, even though I have to wait in line mentally. I don't have time. So I duck underneath the rope behind the last person in line. As soon as they do, the first person goes up to a window and I'm just waiting there really impatiently, wheezing, just wait, 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 and the next person gets called up to a window and just wait, wait, wait. I'm looking at my, my, 
not my watch, this is the image, you know, this is the, the movement for looking at my watch. I was looking at the time on my phone. I have three minutes until the train leaves. I'm freaking out. <laughs> Finally, I get up to the window. I ask for one ticket to Nagoya Station for the train that leaves at 11.37. Uh, I pay, he gives me my tickets, and I'm running through the turnstiles, put my ticket in a turnstile. It's not even a turnstile, nothing turns, just the gate, the thing, you know, gate booth. I put my ticket in, and then I'm looking at the board. He, maybe he told me which track it was. I don't remember. I was freaking out this whole time. It's track one. So I run over to where they have the walkway where they have track one and two. And then I run on a plane. Wait, this is track two. I get off. I run across the walkway. And then I get on train one. And I'm supposed to be on car four. I'm in car one. So I have to walk through all of the cars to get to my seat. And this is still not yet okay. Because some trains in Japan during certain, at certain car points, you cannot cross to more cars again. I am guessing the reason for that is because they do have trains that exist that detach from themselves at certain stations. Maybe that's why. Is this one of those trains? I don't know. Meitetsu never tells you anything. I have no idea if this is going to be one of those trains. I always have bad experiences on Meitetsu trains. So I'm walking through all of these trains. There's, the doors are already shut. I'm like, please just let me be able to get to my seat. If I can't, I'm still going to have to pay that extra free fee and have that bad time. But I can make it through to train four. And I sit down in my seat. I still have to pee. This is a fancy reserve train, so they actually have a toilet at some point on this train. But I'm too out of breath and just all around freaked out, even though I finally made my seat to go pee. So I wait the 30 minute train ride to get to Nagoya and then use a subway bathroom and then make my meeting on time and everything is fine. And literally an hour after I had been running through all of those mazes and stairs and ramps, somewhat the people I'm with say like, your face is red. Are you sunburnt? All of this is in Japanese. I don't feel like translating stuff right now. I'm like, no, I was running <laughs> over an hour ago and my face is still red. Uh, but I made everything and I'm very proud of myself for being able to do a lot of running and jogging without getting like too winded or like too, I didn't have to throw up, so that was good. I guess I was in slightly better shape than I thought I was, um, but I made it. So this is just a warning. If you have to fly into Nagoya and you usually give yourself a short period of time to catch your train because that's all you've ever needed because that's how it's been for the past nine years of me flying into that airport, uh, don't do that anymore unless you know for sure that you're getting dropped off at Terminal 1 and not Terminal 2 where they drop off budget airliner trash like me because they don't care if you have to walk two kilometers to get back to uh, Terminal 1. Oh, by the way, um, of course I had to use that same airport again uh, that evening and the flight on for the, the path for the departures for budget airliner trash like me in Terminal 2 also had hallways, but this time everything was painted pretty and blue in some spots and they had more information on the floor, like uh, begin in your journey or something like that. And at the very beginning it said it was 470 meters of those walkways. And then when I got to the midpoint again, it said nine calories burned, which is one third of what it said in the morning. So I'm taking a lot of liberty guessing here, but if that calorie point really was, you know, halfway on both and the beginning, the, the morning walkways that I had to walk through were three times the evening walkways and the evening walkways were 470 meters long, three times that is almost a kilometer and a half of white walkways before you even get to baggage claim if you are budget airliner trash at Nagoya Airport like me. Um, going back in the evening, I actually didn't give myself too much time to explore the airport because normally I don't. Who wants to sit at the airport for a long time? Uh, I did have at least ex plenty of extra time this time, like an hour um, before my flight began boarding, just to make sure I had time to do a whole bunch of walking in Terminal 2 again. And I passed through a building called flight of dreams and this time I actually got to look around and it's really freaking cool looking so even though I was really annoyed in the morning that there was like really no indication 
for me buying my tickets that surprise you're gonna get dropped off in another building where it's gonna take half an hour of a slow pace walking to get to the trains as opposed to 10 minutes of... Uh, but by the evening, I was okay with it. The Flight of Dreams building was really cool. It's like a an airplane hangar and they have an actual Boeing aircraft there, which doesn't seem really exciting when you're at an airport because you're gonna go get on another plane. I don't know what they had on that plane, but you could pay tickets to go through like kind of a museum sort of thing for Boeing. Is there anything else other than that plane that you can walk through? I don't know. But they had tiered restaurants on the side and they were very beautifully built and it was very lovely. They had a lot of cool looking restaurants. They have like fancy bagels and like homemade cheese restaurants or something. It's I haven't seen those restaurants before. I wanted to have time to like eat and explore them, but I ate in Nagoya City because I didn't realize that was there. Because I didn't have the time I didn't have the time to look in the morning because I was running. <laughs> I was literally sprinting past it in the morning. Um, but anyway, warning, just just to let you guys know if you ever have to fly through Nagoya Airport again. If you do have a bunch of time, go walk to the Flight of Dreams building between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. It's outside of security, um, but it's pretty neat looking. It's like all dark and they've just got a whole bunch of like fancy little lights and stuff. It's nice. I liked it. Uh, so anyway, there you go. PSA. <laughs> Two. Nagoya Chubu Central Air Centraire uh, International Airport Flyers Airport Code NGO. They've got a second terminal now. I don't know if they drop off other flights other than budget airliners. Maybe when it's really busy, they put like normal airplanes over there too. But uh, when I was there, the only plane that they had people going to was Jetstar airplanes, I think. Or Starflyer? Was that maybe one of them? I think they were budget airlines. <laughs> and when you get to the, the gates for Terminal 2, it's a very small gate area. I think it's like 75 through 80. It was only a couple gates. When you get all the way to the gate, I like getting to my gate before I do anything just to check the board and make sure that they're not changing the gate and it wasn't updated on a sign somewhere else. So I get to my gate and I check it and my gate is there, everything is normal. And then I'm like, all right, now I'm gonna go use the bathroom because I had to pee again, like always. So I, I turn around and I look on the map that's right there next to gate 75 and there's no bathroom listed on the map and I'm like, Where's the bathroom? Normally they have bathrooms really close to everything. So I ask a flight attendant for another airline or just, you know, some airport work. I don't know. I ask where the bathrooms is and she's like, you have to go back. And I'm like, all the way through the hallways? But no, I didn't have to go only part of the way through the hall, <laughs> the white hallways again. And at least the evening hallways were only 470 meters compared to what I assume was three times that in the morning because it was also three times the calories. <sighs> Everything worked out, but I certainly got in a whole bunch of exercise. So if you're flying to Nagoya, just beware. Factor that time in to your transition time to the trains or wherever you have to go if you have to be somewhere quickly. Just check, see, I don't know. See if your ticket tells you if you're gonna be at Terminal 1 or Terminal 2. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe they just put all the budget airliner trash in Terminal 2. Get the fuck away from all of these people who paid three times your ticket price to ride a nice airplane, like <laughs> Japan Airlines. <laughs> Take your like stupid Jetstar cheap ticket paying body over there and get away from everyone else. It was weird. It was, well, so good experience and bad, bad experience and good experience. Weird, no, it was funny, interesting experience. I would say that. I was angry at the time, but everything worked out, so it's okay. I would just say it was an interesting experience all around. Anyway, thank you for listening to my story. I hope you enjoyed my story. We're working on um, a June's Kitchen video. We've been working on it for several weeks. We did a whole bunch of filming. Uh, one whole week of filming, we had to scrap because it didn't turn out the way we wanted it in the end. So there's been a lot of trial and error. It's a little different from what we've done before. Uh, hopefully it'll be cool in the end. We're trying to make it work. See you guys later. Bye!